Since the announcement that the Portuguese Golden Visa would shut down, the popularity of other programs has surged, probably in part because of the fact that people realize the time is ticking and they may not get in if they can't if they haven't, you know, started the process early. Because frankly, as Portugal is shutting their program down, there are a bunch of other places that are either raising their requirements or also shutting their programs down. So this kind of fits into something I've mentioned many times on this channel, which is the subject that you should get in while you can because opportunities will not last. This being said, I've been on a mission to share with you about what other programs are out there. You can go and check out some of the previous videos where we've discussed, for example, Estonia, we've talked about Greece, we've talked about a few other places. And so today I'm going to discuss with you a program that has some impending changes. So I'm going to update you on what those changes are, tell you about the program in general so you can understand better whether it is for you or not, why it is we have preferred some others over it up to this point in time, but that might have changed. So we're going to talk about the Spanish Golden Visa today. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. And if you are interested in checking out videos like this, again, go and check out all of our channel. Really appreciate it for those of you who are, it's your first time here. I am Michael, welcome. It is wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much for supporting us. We are international tax experts. We specialize in helping people to kind of relocate themselves or their businesses around the world, optimize their tax, to optimize their lifestyle, their costs, etc. in part of what I call the great migration. So if you're interested in any of those things, if you'd like help to figure out what is the best solution for you or help with implementing that solution, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below where you can send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay. So very briefly, uh, the Spanish Golden Visa. So the Spanish Golden Visa has been around actually for quite a while. They brought it in principally when it was sort of the post global financial crisis time and the Spanish real estate market had crashed quite a bit and they were trying to encourage that market. So hence the most popular way that we hear about people being interested in it is purchasing real estate. You can purchase for 500,000 euros. So similar to the top end in what Portugal was, double the cost of what it was in Greece, although they're raised uh, to 500,000 for certain areas now. And then there was other options though. You could also invest uh, 2 million euros into government debt, so basically government bonds, or you could put a million euros into a company or bank deposit and qualify on that basis. And essentially this gave you the same sort of access that you get in a lot of these programs, which is of course you can have residency there and notably you don't have a physical presence requirement. So you could have that visa, that access to the Schengen zone, that access to Spain, etc. So people love Spain, great place in terms of quality of life, granted. Fair amount of pickpocketing going on in Barcelona, which is kind of the pickpocket capital of Europe. Uh, however, you know, great weather, great culture, great people, great uh, history, et cetera, et cetera. Lots to love. And the food scene, I'm a big food guy. And so there are some of the best restaurants in the world are located in Spain for those who are interested. Anyway, so that's the first part of it. Now, this came with a few benefits that you don't often get in other programs, all right? So a few of those are, first of all, the right to work. Okay, so unlike some programs, when you get a golden visa, it comes not with the ability to work in that country. In this particular case, it actually does bring that with you. In addition, you gain access to the healthcare and schooling system, which again is not always the case when you're looking at a golden visa. You can bring, of course, your spouse, your children, and your dependent elderly parents with you. And so that's very cool and makes this a fairly attractive program. Now, why typically was it not as compelling as, say, Portugal? Uh, there's two main reasons, but you know, then we'll dive into a few kind of, of the pieces around it. Number one is you were in a situation where the only path to citizenship is you actually spend six months a year there. You cannot get a path to citizenship by not putting it in that time. And it's a 10 year path to citizenship rather than a five year path to citizenship. So that's a pretty major difference, right? Second of all, I mean, the investment was a lot lower. Uh, in Portugal, you get as low as 280. Granted, a bunch of people were in a 500 bracket. By the way, the 500,000 uh, investment in properties in Spain uh, could be across multiple properties or it could be on a single property. So that's useful to know. And so, you know, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a trade off there. Another thing that was a factor is related to tax. So certainly the tax treatment in Portugal, if a person was under the non-habitual residency regime, tended to be a more attractive path than you would get, at least for a certain number of people or certain situation, than some other paths. 
This being said, if you actually aren't there for half the year, you know, you're just getting the visa and you're spending a minimal amount of time, you're not going to be tax resident anyway, so the tax rules aren't going to matter that much. Spain does have really tough tax rules. We've talked about it in some previous videos about international tax planning. There's some ways to plan around it, but it's complicated and they don't always apply if you're under the golden visa. So that's also something to be aware of. Anyway, they are bringing in some changes or they're discussing bringing in some changes rather. And this is part of the move of the European Union to just get rid of golden visa programs. I've talked before about how this is ridiculous. The kind of reasons that they give for it make no sense whatsoever. Uh, notably, for example, they say, oh, you know, criminals are using this. Well, you need criminal record checks. So either there's a problem with your procedure, uh, which applies, by the way, to all visas, not just golden visas, or you're spouting nonsense, which is exactly what they're doing. They're using some excuse. Anyway, that being said, you need a criminal record check. You need health insurance uh, to come there. You need proof of your investment uh, as part of the process of going through. And so anyway, they're putting pressure all across the EU to shut down the program. So we've seen pressure, uh, first of all, on Cyprus with their citizenship by investment program. We've seen Portugal shutting their program down. Latvia had kind of previously shut their program down. Ireland shutting down their program. UK, not a part of the EU, but still kind of that similar mindset, also shutting down their program. So we've seen a lot of programs shut down. And then we've seen the prices go up in Greece. And so what uh, Spain is currently mulling is either getting rid of the program or raising the minimum investment to a million euros. So if you are interested in taking advantage of that, you may want to do it while you don't have to invest a million euros, uh, 500,000 euros. I mean, fa fairly substantial difference for a lot of people. If it's right for you, there are a bunch of other residency paths in Spain. But that being said, not ones that allow you to have that minimal stay requirement, which is basically non-existent. So anyway, if you're interested in that or any of the other programs, as well as the tax planning for how you relocate, going to places like Asia or the Middle East or Latin America or any of these other areas, please reach out to us and I'm going to look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.